Hey guys, so in this video, I want to talk about some tips and tricks to win in Fortnite Chapter 2 Season 1. I did a pretty long overview of everything new on the day the season dropped, but I didn't go too in depth into the changes. What we'll be doing today is diving into the nitty gritty of each major change, and more importantly, seeing how we can use them to play better and win more. Really quickly, I'll throw some timestamps up in case you want to skip around. There's going to be a lot of info, so for the complete picture, make sure you watch through until the end. With that being said, let's start with the biggest change in Fortnite Chapter 2, the map. Instead of the old Athena map we played on for 10 seasons, we've moved on to the new Apollo map. With 10 new points of interest, 3 returning points of interest, and a ton of other spots that aren't named on the map. The new locations include Craggy Cliffs, which is on the northern edge of the map. It features a bunch of houses, some stores, and a big fish stick restaurant. Since it's right on the shoreline, there are motorboats which you can use to rotate and get to zone. To the southwest of Craggy Cliffs is Sweaty Sands. This reminded me a lot of Paradise Palms because there's the hotel on the front and then houses and stores lined up down the street. The big difference though is Sweaty has a boardwalk that goes out over the water. That's where you can find fishing rods, loot, and obviously fish for you to catch. Next, Weeping Woods is a cross between Wailing Woods and Lonely Lodge. There's big log cabins all over the place trees because it's in a forest, yet it's still surprisingly open and flat. If you go towards the east, you'll see the giant watchtower, which is what initially reminded me of Lonely. Directly south from there is Slurpee Swamp, another new POI. Slurpee kind of looks like a redesigned flush factory. It's a bunch of factory buildings and slurp buckets everywhere which I'll talk more about in a minute. But there's also cars, brick, and steel for you to farm. After that, there's Misty Meadows that looks extremely similar to Happy Hamlet. All the houses and stores within it have those weird sloped tops. Even the layout inside the stores is exactly the same. Misty is much bigger though, as it's separated in two parts by a bridge. And there's a clock tower just like the one at Happy on the other side. Moving on to Lazy Lake, this spot is not like many other past POYs, just in terms of layout and design. There's a bunch of modern houses and different buildings in the middle with tons of loot. That's why I think it's going to be the new Tilted Towers, as in everyone and their mother will be landing there. Then, all the way on the east edge of the map is Dirty Docks. As the name implies, it's essentially a boat dock full of cargo containers and cranes. It's not on a shoreline or a beach like the other coastline locations are. However, there are motorboats that are attached to the cranes and hanging off the dock. Second to last new POI is Steamy Stacks. This is another extremely unique location when you look at its layout and everything within it. There's two giant power plant stacks, a Kevolution Energy building, and purple goo all over the place. At first, I thought it was slurp juice, but it's not. I guess it's some sort of energy plasma or something like that. The final new point of interest is Frenzy Farms. To me, it's a way bigger and better combination of Fatal Fields and Anarchy Acres from Season 3. It's got the big house at the center, cornfields everywhere, and even a big red barn. Now, those are just the new named locations. There's a crazy amount of unnamed spots on the map that actually do have names when you go there. Some examples are Homley Hills, Lockie's Lighthouse, and Hydro 16. There's also three named locations that are not new and are the exact same from the old map. They are Salty Springs, Pleasant Park, and Retail Row. My advice for consistent wins is to land somewhere new, but not one of the named POIs. A majority of people will be landing at spots like Lazy Lake and Slurpee Swamps. In all the tiny unnamed spots I've dropped, 
I've always been uncontested, and I've always been able to make it out of the early game alive. I'm not saying you should not drop at the new POIs to learn them, but in terms of getting that first dub, landing safe is the move. And yes, I will be making a new drop spot video very soon. Let's say you decide to land at a more popular spot though. It's very important to know all the unique attributes each location has. What I mean by this is that each location has something different that's only at that one location. At Slurpy Swamps, they have slurp containers everywhere that you can break and get shield or health. It also has a tiny slurp lake around it that heals you as you're in it and will heal you even faster when you're directly under the leak. Another example would be that at Steamy Stacks, anytime you're in the stack, it will send you up into the air and let you glide away. This is useful for flanking people or just rotating to zone. You need to be aware of things like these because of how important they are for winning fights and getting to zone. Since we're on the topic of rotating and getting to zone, another thing you need to do is rotate early. The map is a lot bigger and longer than the old one, which means if you're not paying attention to the circle, you will get caught in storm. What makes it even worse is that Epic vaulted every rotation item or vehicle. Launch pads, hoverboards, brutes, flint knocks are all gone. Instead, we have motorboats. Motorboats are found at different locations around the map near the water. They can hold up to 4 people, they have 800 total HP, they can shoot rockets, and they have a boost to make them go faster. Straight up, these boats should be your primary way to rotate this season or anytime you land near the edge of the map. All you gotta do is take a boat and drive up the rivers that run throughout the center. Another way to rotate is to hop into the water and swim. You can do a normal paddle or jump out and back into the water like a dolphin. Something cool that Epic did was make the rivers have currents, so you can swim pretty fast with the current but swimming upstream is really hard and slow. They also made it so jumping into the river or any body of water will negate fall damage. The last thing I wanted to mention before we move on to the weapon changes was fishing. Fishing is extremely useful for getting extra loot and heals. All you need is a fishing rod, which can be found near the coast or in chests. Then, toss your line in, wait for a bite, and reel it back in. You can get guns, flopper fish, which give you health back when you eat them, and slurp fish that give you 50 health or shield. So anytime you need heals from now on, pull out your fishing rod and go fishing. Let's now move on to weapon changes, because there were a ton. On your screen should be a picture of the current loot pool. Everything you can see is what's in the game, and everything that's not means it's no longer in the game. This other list is everything that's gone and has been vaulted. The chug jug, slurps, campfires, shockwaves, stink grenades, none of them are in the battle royale anymore. Back to the other list, and I think Epic was going for a very basic and organized weapon pool. Every gun has a white, green, blue, purple, and gold rarity. There's also only one SMG, two different ARs, two different shotguns, and one sniper. The first major change was to pump shotguns. Not only do they look different, but their damage has changed. A white pump does 140 damage to the head, a blue pump does 180, and a gold pump does 220. This means only the purple and gold pumps can one-shot people. What this also means is that the blue tacks are better than blue pumps. I'll definitely be making a full video on the new shotgun meta, but just know if you don't have a gold or purple pump, tack shotguns are better. Burst rifles are also back and are pretty darn good. The purple and gold versions are basically AUGs. They're also extremely good and accurate. Not necessarily better than the SCAR, but they can be if you hit your shots. Next new weapon is the unsilenced SMG and the compact SMG. Both of these weapons absolutely shred people, but neither are as annoying or overpowered as the old TAC SMG. The bolt action sniper got a rarity change, a new reload animation, and it can finally do collateral damage. Be aware, 
the gold version of it is not a heavy sniper. It's just a bolt that does more damage. My favorite new weapon has to be the gold pistol. It's not a deagle because it's semi-auto. It's more like a buffed version of the lower rarity one. You can see it has a lot less bloom and it has a really mean sound which I love. The other big rarity change was for RPGs. RPGs are now white, green, and blue, along with still being purple and gold. I'm not sure if Epic will change this because they are really annoying and way too abundant at the moment, but if you want to win, definitely abuse them. The last new addition was the Bandage Bazooka. This weapon takes up two spots in your inventory because you can use it to heal yourself and your teammates. The way it works is whoever you hit with it gets an instant 15 health heal, just like popping a bandage. Some final miscellaneous gameplay changes were that you can now hop into dumpsters and hide in haystacks. This could be useful for jumping out on people or just playing safely without having to use any material. There's also blue super chests that give you traps and extra loot. These spawn at normal chest spots, they just have a way lesser chance of actually coming out. A really helpful change is that the storm is much easier to see through. I'm not using any colorblind mode and it's almost transparent, so colorblind modes are kind of useless now. Before I forget, you can now upgrade your weapons at these stations for a set amount of wood, brick, and metal. Once you agree to upgrade it, you hold your interact key and it gives you one tier higher of whatever weapon you wanted changed. The last change is that you can yeet your enemies after you knock them up and pick them up. It's really not that useful because you have to go and find their loot after you throw them, but in the end, it's about sending a message, and that's exactly what you'll do by throwing them off a cliff. Overall, that's nearly everything you need to know to win and do well in the new season. If you came looking for tips and tricks for your settings, don't worry because that's going to be my next upload. But if this video helped you out, do be sure to drop a like, subscribe to the channel, and to turn on post notifications. Thank you to everyone using code Jerrion. Make sure you let me know if you use my code for the battle pass so I can shout you out. Otherwise, that's it from me, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Later.